I have this. And what the hell is it? All right, well, let me tell you what it is. It is a half inch coupler. Pretty standard. You can get them pretty much at any hardware store out there. Half inch threads, and, uh, coarse threads in here. It's about two inches long. You use it to put two threaded rods together. So you would take one on this side, one on that side, and you can connect two of them together. What I've got on here is a round metal disc. And this is a disc that comes off of those metal uh, uh, wiring um, buckets, like you would put switches in, uh, receptacles in. Anytime you're doing outdoor wiring, they, instead of doing using the plastic ones that they use inside a house, you buy those galvanized metal ones, and they put them outside. They're corrosion resistant. Well, if you want to run wires through them, you have to pop the little metal hole, metal uh, disc out so that you can run the wires in. Um, I always save them. You never know when you're going to use them. Case in point. So, what do I got here? Little JB weld. Hold it on the bottom. And uh, that's not going anywhere. And essentially what I did was cap it off. On the side, you'll notice these white sections right here. That is double stick tape. These black lines are the tips of, you guessed it, zip ties medium-sized zip ties and I created this. I managed to find this. This is a five foot long carbon fiber hollow tube. It is a super thin wall, super super strong. I've already had all my weight on it and couldn't bend it or break it. Light as a feather, strong as steel. Now this has a one inch hole. And this fits in here perfectly. Now I'm sure some of you are going to figure out exactly what it is I'm doing here, but for those of you who have it, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you figure it out as it unfolds. This is going to be an edited project, so by the time I upload this video, you'll be seeing the entire process from beginning to end. But as it stands right now, you're going to have to wait a second. What I need to do is figure out a way to get this connected inside here. And I got two choices. I can either go with epoxy or I can go with JB Weld. Either one's going to work. This is not meant to, uh, you know, tow trucks, pull cars, or, you know, beat zombies to death. So I think I'm going to go with the JB Weld. It tends to dry relatively quick and it's going to work just fine. And before I forget, these craft sticks, you can pick them up at any uh, grocery store or Michael's or one of those other craft stores. Indispensable. A couple of bucks. A couple of rubber gloves. I always keep those on hand if you have the kind of friends I did. So would you. Alright. I always use rubber gloves when I work with JB Weld. The stuff is sticky. It's nasty. It's, it's ridiculous to try to get clean. And at the end of the day, I'd just rather pull off my gloves. So, here's what we're going to do. That should set up relatively quickly. Okay guys, well here it is about 12 hours later. Um, still a little bit tacky. I probably should have used more hardener in the uh, mixture that I have, but it's not that big of a deal because uh, it ain't going anywhere. And um, I'm going to use a few more uh, techniques to help fasten it in there. But the bottom line is I've got the uh, slug in here. Now I have threaded capability right in the end there, which is what we wanted all along. What I'm going to do next is drill a couple of holes in here, maybe three, four, I don't know, um, through this carbon fiber into this slug, 
and then I'm going to run some pins in there. And what the pins are going to do is just help reinforce that a little bit more. And then I'm going to mix up a batch of epoxy, put it on top of here, and show you something interesting. do is try to go all the way through it and just do one pin. That might be the better uh, the better choice. Perfect. Hey guys, Michael here, the Homemade Genius. 
here with an update on the survival staff. Yes, I made some updates. Um, I do want to apologize. Some of the stuff I've done to this staff I really did want to show you, but as I was working on it, you know, uh, inspiration hit and, and, you know, breakthroughs popped in my brain late at night and I grabbed the staff and started working on it and putting it together to see what would happen. So let me give you a quick update of what we got here. Um, basically, when last we spoke, I was working on the tip. And this is the tip. I had covered it in the epoxy. You saw me put it in that uh, homemade lathe that I had. And uh, basically, we covered it in the epoxy, soaked everything down, really built this up nice and strong. This tip isn't going anywhere. And, and i got to tell you, when this was done, this was the heaviest part of the uh, entire staff. This carbon fiber, which is what the shaft is made out of, carbon fiber, if you recall, is amazingly light. It almost, I, I let my um, daughter pick it up. She's 11 years old. She held it and she said, wow, it feels like it's floating. I mean, this is just zero weight at all, what you're dealing with right here. Um, anyway, the tip is on there. As you can tell, I've got the threaded rod sitting right at the top. I don't know if this is coming in or not. Um, I've got the threaded end right here. What I did is I've sanded it down, try to get it nice and smooth. In the center right here, I've wrapped a little bit of grip tape, um, similar to the way I did it on the bottom. And then at the top, did a little bit of work up here. I'm going to explain this in a second. I do want to jump in right now when it comes to the grip tape. The reason I'm using grip tape is two reasons. It's strong, it's going to adhere very well, and it's extremely sticky and porous. When I'm working with this, uh, and I'm using the epoxy on here, the epoxy really needs to bite into something, which is why I've sanded this, it, this down. Um, this, I found, it, it just soaks right in here like water almost, and it's not going anywhere. Um, what I was stuck with when I was finished was trying to figure out how to cap this thing off, because I needed some kind of a neat-looking finial end. Um, what I found that was going to work best for me is I got a copper coupling, you can see right here, it's threaded right here. And it tapers down into a, where you would solder it into a, a pipe, a one inch pipe. It fits perfectly over here. It does not obstruct inside here. It still leaves me the full diameter in here. Um, so it stays completely hollow and unobstructed from the bottom to the top. What I did was took a little bit of JB Weld, wrapped it around the top like this of the, of the uh, survival staff. And then I put this on. And here we are. The final product. Now I am definitely sorry I didn't have the opportunity to show you every step of this process. Um, this was, again, I've never done anything like this before so I was kind of going on the fly. Um, when I was able to, I definitely whipped out the camera and recorded for you so you could see what was going on. Um, but sometimes uh, I just got hit with, you know, a, a blasted, brilliant idea that I couldn't sit on and I didn't have time to set the camera up for every aspect of it. So what I'm going to do is tell you top to bottom what I've got here. It is, and I've seen a thousand of these on the internet, um, it's a survival pole. That's all it is. This is a hiking staff that you can carry with you when you go walking in the woods. Um, and it's it's got some survival type capabilities. Let's put it to you that way. It is definitely, and I want to say this right up front, it is definitely not a substitute for prudent planning and an adequate survival pack if you're going hiking, walking, or camping throughout the woods or doing any kind of bushcraft whatsoever. This is nothing more than a supplement to what you should already be carrying with you. It is a carbon fiber pole. And yes, carbon fiber can be a little bit pricey. I did find this on the internet. If you go searching around, you could find sections of carbon fiber in any shape you can think of. Sometimes, I think what happens is like when you see stone at a stone uh, shop for granite countertops or something. Um, somebody places an order, they need a certain length of it. This company makes what they need to get the job done cuts off the excess, provides the customer what they need, and just sticks what they have in a stockpile. This piece cost me around 30-ish dollars. Um, <laughs> it weighed nothing. It almost seemed like it floated here when I got it. So every single thing I added to this, although added weight to it, 
I was adding weight to nothing as opposed to starting with, I've seen guys do it out of wood, out of PVC, um, out of a lot of other materials. I was starting with, I, I mean, it, next to zero in weight when I started the process. On the tip, you saw me work on this before. Essentially what I did was put the slug in the bottom, uh, the threaded slug, to be able to receive this rubber tip on a half inch threaded rod. Now the reason I used a threaded tip instead of just hard coating this, I call it the urban knuckle because this is really good for rocky terrain or if you're walking on the on the street, you know, if you're walking in, a, in your neighborhood, um, this is definitely going to hold up for you. But I wanted to be able to interchange it with now, let me, I'll show you later. It's an, there's an interchangeable tip that's going to go on the end of this, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I don't know if this is going to come out. You see there are white lines all along here, and, I, and I'll do my best to see if I can show you here. There are numbers next to them, and what those are, these white lines are one inch increments and I've got them numbered one two three um, so you, you know you can see them all the way up to 24 basically what you do with this um, I made kind of like a makeshift tracking pole um, you know you would use this to measure the gait of an animal if you wanted to track an animal and for beginners and people who have never tracked before and don't know what they're looking for on the back here I don't know if you can see this at all there are animal prints. Just some common ones on here that I put. I've got deer, raccoon, fox, wolf, coyote, rabbit, bear, uh, squirrel. Just some tracks for reference. Uh, some common stuff that you know you, you could very well run across. Um, and I put those on here for reference. Moving on. Around here, you'll see there's a little bit of a, a bump as well. What I did was I added some girth to the center of the staff uh, just to give it a little bit of a different texture and feel and I wrapped from here to roughly the top this is just kind of a comfortable position for me this is where I would consider the top of the handle this section has 40 feet of paracord wrapped around it nice and tightly um, it is set so that if you have to unravel it you can paracord great emergency cord everybody's seen it pretty much everyone's familiar with it um, this is a thousand and one uses for it. I don't want to get into that. So, on top of that, um, just put a little decorative bead. To, I didn't want to waste any paracord and cut it off, so I tied it off and just threw a bead on it. Right here, ranger beads. Um, ranger beads help you determine how far you're traveling. Um, generally, in, in, in a very quick nutshell, what it, the way you use ranger, ranger beads are like this. You have your ranger beads set right before you start walking and before you travel you should already know you would basically walk out a length of say 100 feet and you would count how many steps usually with just one foot how many times does my right foot touch the ground when I walk 100 feet um, you know do it on a couple of different terrains come up with an average and say you know it takes me X number of steps to walk 100 feet and essentially what you would do the way I have it set up is every time you count it out and you've hit your 100 foot mark, you slide a bead. In here, I, I did discuss that I put this uh, uh, lanyard hole right here specifically for ranger beads. You could, however, rethread this and, and put um, paracord through here and make a wrist rest if you so choose. You could actually still put it in there. There's plenty of room in there for it. And this is in there and it's not going anywhere. Um, real dis quick discussion on the tip. There is a copper fitting up here that has been JB Weld to the top, very similar to the way I put the slug in the bottom. And then from here to about this area right here, I have the epoxy on top of it as added support. Um, it's kind of tapers. It goes from about quarter inch, maybe a little less to quarter inch, and tapers down into a blend down at the bottom straight to nothing. Um, so there's a lot up here. Now before I go any further, I want to take a second and I want to talk about this epoxy. The epoxy that I used, um, and I'll show you and, and provide a link to where I got it down below, I want to say two things about the epoxy. It's very similar um, to the epoxy that they use when they take carbon fiber material, vacuum seal it with, with an epoxy, and create, somebody found something, 
and then they create the carbon fiber tube. So it's, vir it's virtually the same type of, of epoxy that they use there, which means when I'm adding it on here, I'm not just adding random epoxy, I'm, I'm adding more structural strength and support. This top right here is between the copper, between the carbon fiber, and between all the added epoxy that I put on here is substantial. It has weight to it, but it's certainly not heavy by any stretch of the imagination. But it is heavy enough so that if I were to get a swing and come down on, say, you know, um, a rabid raccoon or something comes at you in a path, this is going to crack its skull open and, you know, this will take down the black beast of Antioch. I will assure you of that. Um, very substantial and very strong. Uh, I know I'm using carbon fiber, however, I do like things kind of, you know, rustic looking. So when I put the epoxy on here, I really just wanted a coating, but if you rubbed your hand across this and, and felt it, it feels like what a branch would feel like. It's irregular. Branches don't grow in a perfect, absolute perfect factory-made tube. There's some irregular, irregularity in the growth rings and the growth marks. And that's what it feels like when, when, you're, when you're working this and holding this and, and, and touching it and actually looking at it. It kind of looks irregular. So I went out of my way to kind of replicate that look. Um, if you wanted to make it smooth and perfect, you could absolutely do that. That would be that would be your choice. Now that pretty much covers the outside. There's only one thing left that I haven't talked about, and that is the top here. The top is just simply a PVC cap that I made to go into here. I just closed it off. It, it would, it's one of those extensions, threaded extensions you would put in a pipe if you wanted to keep a runoff pipe going, and you would uh, use PVC glue here to continue your pipe run. I just bought the knuckle, put it on here, put a cap on it, coated the entire thing in that epoxy and kind of roughed it up a little bit. I used some grip tape and just really made it irregular so it's kind of got that leathery gnarly knuckle look going. Um, I'm probably going to wrap something inside these threads because it doesn't quite go all the way down um, mainly because I spilt a little bit of that epoxy in the top half of the threads and now I can't get the threads through. But again the good thing is that this top easily I can make a dozen of these tops and I've already got ideas for different types of tops for different uses uh, one with a light for example um, one uh, for the zombie apocalypse where I'm gonna put spikes on it and, and you know just whatever craziness comes to your mind a light a compass anything you could think of um, I actually have one of those little ball compasses that I'm gonna put on here as an as an added feature just to have on here as well um, I just couldn't wait any longer I wanted to show you guys what I had so, um, having said that and gone over it, let me show you why it's threaded at the top and what makes this a survival staff. Now, when I pop this out, you'll notice something sitting in there that's kind of stuck. Basically, it's the other foot. Threaded right here with a half inch thread and it's a spike. The only thing I have is in the bottom here, I think I showed you in a prior video, there's a magnet in there and it holds that so it doesn't fall down the tube. Put this in the bottom. And now you have a spike that's great for, um, for rougher terrain, walking in the woods, it's going to stick in there and you're not going to get any slip out. So now I have a hollow tube, somewhat. However, instead of wasting space, and I had a very light tube to begin with, I decided to utilize the room in here. I've seen this done before. There are other videos on it. This is simply my take on what I would put in a survival tube. Flint and steel. I have a packet right here that's got in here um, some fishing hooks, uh, some wire ties, some alcohol pads, and some put this back in here and some water purification tablets just in a little ziploc bag stuck on a tie stuck at the end duct tape I found these cool tubes relatively inexpensive about an inch in diameter a little less than an inch and I just used rubber grommets to cap the ends off and I made these rubber tubes that fit absolutely perfectly in here I believe in organization place for everything and everything in its place so naturally I got a label on here so I know what's in here right when I pull it out 
In here, we have a couple of earplugs, and you'll see earplugs throughout this entire tube, and the reason that they're in there is for a couple of reasons. Yes, they do offer some ear protection, but they're also great for floats, and they're great for spacers to keep things from rattling. I have one in the end. Nothing's going to rattle inside here now. Um, I have trick candles, you know, the kind that you have at a birthday party, you try to blow them out, they won't go out. Well, you light one of those and stick it in the fire, it's not going to blow out on a windy night, and it may stay lit long enough to help you get a fire started. Um, and by the way, each one of these tubes is, is organized based on its need. This, if you notice the red on here, this represents fire. Um, I've also got waterproof matches. And the waterproof matches I bought came in a little balsa wood type box, and the balsa wood was real thin. So I went ahead and, and cut them in strips. They're in here. I stole the striker, so now I have the striker in there. And tinder. Tinder meaning the wood from the box. That's going to help burn. That's stuff that will burn. In the center here, I have petroleum jelly soaked in some cotton in a Ziploc bag. That stuff burns. It's a great fire starter. And then a, a pocket knife. Um, I know a pocket knife may not be fire, but you know, just a little teeny keychain pocket knife, you never know. You may uh, need something to strike your flint and steel with, um, or what have you. It, it's just, it's a knife. Why do you not want a knife? Don't argue with me. Another earplug. Again, these act as spacers in the end and keep everything from shaking around. Next, first aid kit. White bands represent first aid kit. Again, that makes sense for me. You may want to do blue. You may want to do a red cross symbol. It's up to you. Um, I, I'm sorry, food, not, not first aid. Uh, my apologies. Uh, you, the red cross one is in here. The white represented food. And again, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you, and, and, and I saw the stripe and made the wrong assumption. But again, that's why I got the labels in here. Had I thought this was first aid in an emergency and ripped it open, I would have been wrong. But the label, looking right down, told me completely different. Um... In here, this is more, I want to say, food related. And I don't want to say, uh, again, that this is going to be meals and, and supplement for meals. However, this is something that could potentially help you in, in your effort to get food um, or, or, or sustain a little bit of energy while you're trying to get food. Sugar packets times two. I got a couple of sugar packets in there. A little sugar in some, in some water or sugar that you put in your mouth is, might help you get that little energy boost if it's, you know, cold, you're tired, what have you. Um, a tea bag, yeah, tea bag. You might want a cup of tea. It's cold outside, rainy, whatever the case may be, a nice hot cup of tea might help you out. I've got a razor knife, again, with the whole knife theme. You can never have enough of them. It's a knife. Why do you not want a knife? Don't argue with me. And a couple of miniature straws, just some small straws. God forbid you got to the point where you had to be, you know, you don't want to stick your face in a hole, but you had to get some water out. There are some small drinking straws in here so that you can take some water right out of the uh, right out of a cup or a pond or, or what have you again I don't recommend drinking <laughs> out of a pond that's why I got the uh, purification tablets in there this big red cross first aid tube now this one has got I put a cork on the end a, a full-size full on board cork and, you know again they, this could be used as a fishing bobber um, as long as well as those uh, this was just a little bit bigger um, not the most packed first aid kit you'll ever hear, but it's got a couple of essentials. The cork, as I mentioned, I've got a big bandage, I've got a pick, in case you get like a, a splinter or something, you know, a little, a little metal pick that comes in some some of the first aid kits. Um, a few band-aids, some Q-tips, super glue, yeah, super glue works. If you got a big cut and you need to slow the bleeding down, trust me, super glue will close it right up. I've got a tube of Neosporin in here and an alcohol spray. We're almost done. This, probably my favorite thing in the world, because <laughs> I made it. What this is, is a piece of wood wrapped in fishing twine to go with the fishing hooks, to go with the bobbers in case you needed to get food. I've got a cork on the end of it, and this blade is a saw blade out of an old Swiss Army knife that had broken. I had, there were some blades left in there that were still good, a couple were broke and bent and just beyond repair the, the casing was broke so I took it apart and and hacked out all the uh, usable parts what I did was I took a piece of wood I split it in half I troweled out one end used the epoxy and affixed the uh, 
saw blade into it and essentially made a more comfortable ergonomic type handle. Um, I've even got little grooves cut in for your fingers. Um, I've got the, the back of it kind of tapered a little bit so that when you're pushing it, it's more comfortable on your hand. Again, you are not going to cut a cord of wood, but you could certainly cut um, some small, bran some small uh, broken branches down and make it uh, so that you have a manageable fire. The cork does two things, gives you yet another cork for fishing or what have you, but it also protects the tip when I put it down into the, into the canister. Well, that's it, guys. That covers the survival staff. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this was a really fun build. Um, I learned a lot. There's a few things I'd definitely do different if I built it again, but like with any good prototype, part of the process is learning. Um, I would be glad to go in depth if anybody has any additional questions on this or just wants any other information, please, by all means, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, let me know if you thought it was a good idea. Um, if you have any questions and you want to ask privately, just send me a message. Uh, I'd appreciate any subscriptions. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Genius out.